Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for the introduction. I'm Atsushi Takas from the University of Tokyo. Uh, the title of our presentation is a small CRT exponent RC revisited. And this is a joint work with uh, Yaolu, the University of Tokyo, and Li Chan Peng from the Chinese Academy of Science. Uh, okay, so we want to record RSA. Uh, pu RSA public key has uh, two components, uh, capital N, public modules N, and the public exponent E. And the secret key has three components, the secret primes P and Q, and the secret exponent D. And as you know, the N is the product of P and Q. Uh, and usually P and Q are the same bit size. And the public exponent E and the secret exponent D satisfy this equation. Uh, in general, it's very hard to break RSA, but uh, as a special case, when the secret exponent D is too small, uh, they are a concrete attack, and in particular, uh, Bore and Duffy proposed a polynomial time attack when the secret exponent D is smaller than capital N to 0 0.292. Uh, and the, the attack uh, makes use of the lattice-based Coppersmith method. And although the Bonnet and Duffy attack are heuristic, but it works well in practice. And the next, we want to recall the CRTRC. This is our main attack target of this paper. As opposed to the uh, standard RSA, uh, in the secret key, there are no, D, no secret exponent D, but there are uh, CRT exponents DP and DQ in turn. And DP and DQ satisfy these equations. So a <coughs> uh, natural, natural question we want to ask is, is that uh, there are analogous attacks, uh, analogous polynomial time attacks on CRT RSA uh, when it works when DP and DQ are small. That is uh, analogous attacks of, to Bonnet Duffy. And uh, for the attack, uh, we want to introduce uh, two attack scenarios. And the first one is a small DQ attack. Uh, in this attack scenario, uh, P is, the prime factor P is significantly smaller than the other prime factor Q. And although it's very natural, it's not very natural setting, uh, P is significantly smaller than Q. And only, uh, the only DQ is sig sig significantly small. Uh, DP is ar arbitrarily large. And in the attack scenario, first uh, may, may propose an attack which works when uh, P is smaller than capital N to 0 0.382. So the P and Q are very unbalanced case. After that, uh, Bertrand behind may propose improved attack where it works when P is smaller than capital N to 0 0.468. So it becomes uh, a, little unbar a little balanced, but it's still unbalanced case. And although there are 10 years have passed since the Bray Chamber had made the attack proposal, but there are no improved attacks reported. But it doesn't mean that the, the, the attack is not very famous one, but it's not, uh, it's not true. Uh, it's very famous attack, and there are some several Variants of this, uh, these attacks are proposed, and uh, technically, the lattice construction of these attacks are applied to the other, other attacks, such as the partial key exposure attacks. But uh, there are no attacks have been made in these 10 years, and, uh, and the natural question is that can we reach the balanced case when, can we improve the attack to when P is smaller than capital N to 0 0.5? since the 0 0.5 is a natural RSA setting. And next, we want to talk about the second attack scenario, the small DPDQ attack. In this case, as the natural RSA setting, P and Q are the same bit size. And both P and, uh, DP and DQ are small. In this attack scenario, uh, Johannes may propose the attack. Uh, the attack works when DP, DQ are smaller than capital N to 0 0.073. And as the uh, as first attack scenario, uh, there are no improvements have been made in these 10 years, but, uh, but these attack, this attack constructions are used to other settings. So it's very famous attacks. And in my opinion, it's uh, one, of the, uh, one of the best results in the context of Coppa Smith method, but there are no improvements have, improvement have, been, have been made, made in these 10 years. And then uh, we want to ask that, can we recover larger DP and DQ for the same attack scenario? 
And so uh, we want to introduce our results. Uh, in these two attack scenarios, uh, we gave the positive answers. Uh, we proposed improved attacks in both attack scenarios. And in the first attack scenario for the small DQ attack, uh, we first achieved the bound, uh, capital N to 0 0.5. It's a very natural bound. And uh, also in the second attack scenario, we obtained a significant improvement. And uh, our attack works when DP, DQ are smaller than capital N to 0 0.1 to 2. Uh, the exponent of capital N is about twice larger than the Johannes May attack since uh, I think it's a very significant imp improvement. And uh, it's a very incremental result, but uh, we, we extend our attack to the variants of CRTRC, such as uh, March Prime RC or Takaki's RC or some, something. And we can, we can obtain the improvement with our, uh, our proposed improved lattice construction. And our lattice construction is specialized to the CRTRC key generation. And, uh, Although our attacks, both, uh, although all our attacks are heuristic, but we, we check the validity of, of our attack by computer experiments. And uh, also, uh, I think uh, the improvement of the second attack is the main contribution of this paper. But in this talk, uh, we wanted to focus on the, only the first attack, since the first attack is simpler to understand, and we use the same technique to obtain the improvements. Okay, uh, so this figure compares the attack condition between the, uh, for the first attack, uh, the small DQ attack. And uh, we compare the attack condition of bright chamber may attack and our, our improvements in radio area. Uh, this axis represents the size of P, and this axis represents the size of DQ. And for both attacks, when P becomes large, uh, P becomes close to capital N to 0 0.5, the recoverable size of DQ becomes smaller. And for the Brechen Bahame attack, uh, Brechen Bahame attack works when P is smaller than capital N to 0 0.4688, but our attack works when works to uh, P is smaller than capital N to 0 0.5. And we, we achieved the, this band for the first time. Okay, so we want to move to the uh, technical detail, and so uh, I want to recall the Copper Smith method to solve modular equations. Uh, first, uh, we want to consider uh, we want to solve the modular equation f x y equals zero modular e, the bivariate modular equation, and what we want to find is the root x truder and y truder, and these absolute values are upper bounded by some integers capital X and capital Y. Copper Smith method can find the roots in polynomial time when capital X and capital Y is uh, reasonably small. And uh, in the algorithm construction, uh, we first produce uh, several polynomials, G1 to Gn. And we produce n polynomials. And all polynomials have the same root, x truder and y truder, modular e to m with some parameter m. And next, uh, we construct a matrix. We construct a matrix B, and uh, rows of B consist of uh, coefficient, ve coefficient vectors of each g1 x capital X y capital Y to gn x capital X y capital Y. Although we uh, do not explain the detail, but uh, after applying the LLL lattice reduction to this uh, basis matrix B, and the output of the LL reduced basis are smaller than the modulus, this modulus E to M, then we can find the roots. And the condition can be written as this. Uh, if the determinant, of the determinant of V to 1 over the dimension is smaller than E to M, then uh, we can find the extruder and the extruder, the desired roots in polynomial time. Although we need some heuristic argument, but uh, you shouldn't care about it since uh, we check the validity by our computer, computer experiments. And uh, as I said, uh, we can obtain the improvement if the inequality holds. And 
So what we want to consider is that how to produce B that minimizes the left-hand side of the inequality for the fixed M. Okay, then uh, I want to talk about the previous, previous matrix construction. And so first, I want to talk about the, how to formulate the attack scenario as the modular equation. Uh, recall the, this is a CR, CRTRC key generation. And by taking modulo E, uh, we obtain this modular equation, FQ. FQ equals zero. And by comparing these two equations, uh, the solution of XQ and YQ is K and Q. But May didn't solve the modular equation to construct the attack. Uh, uh, he, he takes an additional trick. Uh, by uh, not the, this original key generation, uh, he multiplies the, the other prime factor P to this equation. So the left hand side becomes E D Q P, and the right hand side becomes this form. And by taking modulo E to this equation, he obtained the other modular equation, F P, X P Y P equals zero modulo E. And and the solution of the X P Y P is K minus one and P. Since the, uh, since the P, uh, the solution P is sig significantly smaller than this Q, uh, may solve this equation, FP equals zero, not FQ equals zero. Then may construct the matrix at this. And uh, the e each row has a coefficient of each polynomials. And, uh, and this is a very natural construction for the Coppa Smith method. Uh, that was later formulated by Johannes and May. And uh, you, as you can see, this is a triangular matrix. And the determinant is written as this. So uh, please close a look at the last two polynomials. The polyma two polynomials E, e y square and uh, Fy square. And uh, what Bright and Baha may notice is that uh, these diagonals are very large. So, and they, they can reduce the determinant by some additional trick, and the trick is that they use the other polynomial uh, E, Y, Q, and F, P, and times Y, Q. What Y, Q is that, although the original F, P doesn't have a variable Y, Q for the solution Q, but, but Brechen Baha'i may make, use the additional variable and, and the trivial relation, although Y, P, the value and Y, P and Y, Q are not known, but they know the fact that yp times yq equal n. Then they use the relation and reduce the, reduce the determinant. And uh, technically, the either yp or yq appeared in every monomer. And so recall the, uh, we want to observe the previous approach. Uh, may solve the modular equation, fp equals zero, since p is much smaller than q. And the Brechen Baha may take the same approach, but they reduce the determinant with the new variable yq. And what we consider is that since the may rely on the fact that p is smaller than q, so we don't think the, the approach can recover the, the balance case, capital N to 0 0.5. We think it's very, very infeasible. The approach is infeasible. And since, <coughs> since may takes the approach when, uh, since p is smaller than q, but Brechen Baha may use the variable Q. So we don't know why, why Brechen Baha and May should follow the maze approach. So uh, what we do in our paper is that we solve the, not the only, we solve not only the modular equation FP equals zero, but we solve the side multiplicative modular equation FP equals zero and FQ equals zero. And we want to talk the benefit of this approach. Uh, this is the Brechen Baha May matrix and uh, let's consider this, this polynomial, E, Y, Q. If we omit this polynomial, uh, this remains the uh, two monomials, but uh, if we use, uh, use the other variable that denotes the uh, one, one plus XP, uh, we write one plus XP as XQ, and we can construct this, this matrix, this new matrix. And what is the point is that what we omit is the what, uh, what the polynomial we omit has a ra large di diagonals. So although we, we omit the di 
we, we omitted polynomials, we can construct the new matrix and the, the small, only with the small diagonals. So we can reduce the determinant by this, uh, by this construction. And what is the technical point is that, is that although they, uh, the previous works only uses the FP, the polynomial FP, but we, we use FQ to reduce the determinant. It means that the, the last polynomial denotes the FQ. That means uh, FQ is defined as this and, and some tedious, uh, tedious transformation. We can, uh, we can formulate this as this. And we use the FQ. We use the structure of FQ to reduce the determinant. Uh, as I said, we can eliminate some polynomials whose diagonals are large. So we can reduce the determinant of the matrix. And since uh, we use the FP and the FQ, and we use either FP or FQ, where the ratio depends on the size of P and Q. And in our case, an algebraic structure of FQ enables us to construct the triangle matrix without useless polynomials. And uh, lambda denotes the ratio which polynomials to use. And uh, this, is, this is the case for m equal 1 and lambda equal 1 over 2. And uh, what we proved in, in our paper is that uh, this is not essential. Uh, we use xp uh, only when the monomials don't have yq. And we use xq only when the monomials don't have, uh, monomials have yq uh, by, by this. Uh, by this restriction, we can construct triangle matrix, not only for m equal 1, but uh, like 1 over 2, but uh, larger m or the, for arbitrary lambda, arbitrary ratio. And so, so we can obtain this improvement. And uh, yeah, OK. OK, that is the end. Thank you for listening. We do have some time for questions. Okay, then, ah. Uh, so are there any implementations in the wild of uh, CRTRSA who have this weakness? Yeah, um, what? Uh, are there uh, implementations in the wild of CRT RSA which sm such small d's? Yeah. Uh, in our paper, we implement our attack. I and mean, what? Uh, industrial implementations, so for example. Uh, for, for what? Uh, implementations in industrial products. In this product? In other words, is your d realistic? <laughs> uh, you mean attack is realistic or not? No, I'm just asking, uh, so did you witness uh, examples of uh, such parameters uh, in, uh, in implementations on the internet uh, or such? Ah, no, 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 uh, we, uh, we, uh, we produced the RSA instance by ourselves and uh, attack it. Okay. Uh, the main reason for uh, making this small is to have a small number of multiplications in the uh, exponentiation algorithm. Yeah. But the relationship is not that uh, uh, simple because uh, if you have many ones in the expression of D, then it costs you more. Is there any way to include the uh, density of ones in the exponent in your analysis? So the simplest case is if in addition to knowing that d is small, you know that it is close to a power of two, for example. Yeah. Will it fit into your uh, uh, lattice reduction if someone was uh, overambitious in trying to reduce the number of operations in exponentiation? Yeah, you mean uh, low humming weight dp and dq reduce their operation? D is both small and uh, yeah. of low humming weight. Uh, but, uh, in, in this approach, I think the, um, we, we, can, uh, we can handle the small DP or DQ, but I don't know we can handle a low humming weight case. Suppose that D is not that small, it's medium size, but it's of the form one, 
then many zeros, and then uh, having... Uh, uh, in that case, we want to know where zero appears exactly. Okay, so, let's take it off. Yeah.